Okay, I'm sure this will be the final video. Uh, I've been enjoying reading this, and um, I'm learning a lot of this actually for the first time myself. So, um, carrying on. A uh, German American farmer did most of his work with his hands. German Americans made it a matter of pride to keep farms in their own families generation after generation. This was true in the colonial period as well as the present. They kept their own land and they bought that of their neighbors. Number eight, German American farmers have consistently proved themselves to be the most successful ethnic group in the field of agricultural in American history. Finally, 36% of the American rural farm population is German American. In the 12 states of the Midwest, the percentage is even higher, 49%. So in the central agricultural region of the United States, half of the farmers are German American. So a lot of German American farmers. Um, the John Johann A. Roebling Bridge, the suspension bridge. Yeah, let's let's mention some of this. Business and industry. German Americans have played a major role in the industrial history of the United States, especially in areas that require vocational training and education. This is likely due to the presence of schools in Germany for training in technical fields. The German element predominates in engineering, chemical in industries, the manufacture of musical and optical instruments, the preparation of food products as sugar, salt, cereals, flour, starch, and in canning, preserving, milling, and brewing. German Americans have been prominent in inventing agricultural machinery such as the manufacture of wagons, electric, and railway cars. From the 18th century on, they have been identified with the growth of the iron and steel industries and glass manufacture. They have been prominent in printing, made a monopoly of the art of lit lithography. German Americans have also been prominent in the clothing trade and department stores, and their organization skill has been evident in banking and finance. They were first-class engineering colleges in Germany long before any were founded in the U.S., so many of the greatest bridges in this country were built by Germans. Johann A. Roebling established a suspension bridge as a leading top for great spans over large rivers. The Roeblings completed the famous Brooklyn Bridge in 1883. An earlier prototype had been completed across the Ohio River connecting Cincinnati, Ohio and Covington, Kentucky. The wire cables of Ro Roebling bridges were also manufactured in the Roebling family factory. Charles C. Schneider demonstrated that his cantilever bridge over the Niagara River, that the cantilever type was the better for railway traffic, and the beautiful George Washington Bridge over the Hudson was designed by Ammon, a Swiss German. German Americans have played a significant role in the building trades and construction after the Second World War. For example, many recently arrived Germans brought with them skills from the building trades and formed construction companies, which contributed immensely to the huge building spurt in the post-war era. They built a large number of houses, apartments, commercial buildings, and subdivisions that were necessary for the baby boom generation. German Americans continue to play a large role in this field. The only peer of Thomas Edison in the electrical engineering is Charles P. Steinmetz, who was born in Breslau in his laboratory, <laughs> in his laboratory at Schenectady. He made brilliant discoveries, inventions, became consulting engineer of General Electric Company, called the Wizard of Schneckelstadt. He was responsible for more than 100 electrical inventions. Um, yeah, so business and industry, um, religion, education, music, art and architecture, politics, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who talked about the military industrial complex as a German American, Carl Schurz, who helped get Lincoln elected. Uh, he's a national spokesman for the German Americans. He be began his long career in the 1850s. Military service, journalism, literature, language and linguistics. Um, as a Germanic ling language, English contains numerous words of German origin. American English, or as H.L. Meekin called it, American. It has also incorporated the influences of many languages, especially those brought to America by various immigrant groups. Minken wrote that the Germans were, had left an indelible mark on America, especially on English as it is spoken in the United States. Indeed, every day, vocabulary displays many German words and phrases. American English not only has many words of German origin, but it also contains numerous loan words that have been taken directly into the American vocabulary and reflect the linguistic impact of the German immigrations. German loan words can be found in all areas and deal with all possible topics, but an area that appears to have the greatest concentration is that of dietary ingredients. 
this in itself is an indication of how German food ways have been deeply influenced the American diet. Indeed, the influence had been so great that German words were incorporated directly into everyday language. These words are so ingrained in the vocabulary that they use matter they are used matter of factly as part of what constitute basic elements of the American diet. Here's a partial list of such German loan words. German words in American language. Angst, Alice, Bedeckt, Beer Garden, Briarstube, Bismarck, Blitzkrieg, Bach Beer, Bratwurst, Concertmaster, Cookbook, Cookbook. That's a German word. Cookbook is a German word. Angst is a German word. Bismarck, Blitzkrieg, Della Contessin, Dom Kopf, Ido Wies, Ersatz, Flack, Favergingen, <laughs> I have never heard that, Frankfurter, uh, Stick. Gemuet licked kite, get lick kite, gemute, get lick kite, gemuet, lick kite, gesenheit, gesenheit, uh, gesenheit, gesenheit. <laughs> when someone sneezes, you say gesenheit, right? I think. Glockenspiel, gummy bear, hamburger, hassen, pfeffer, hosfrau, hinderland, iceberg, iceberg. So, Titanic ran into an iceberg. That's a German word. Keffel clash. Kaput. And then he just went kaput. And then that was it. That was over for him. That was over for Drew Thornton. Jumped out of the plane and went kaput. Katzenjammer. Kitsch. Chris Kringle. Which I think is uh, original Santa Claus. Chris Kringle. Kitsch. Katzenjammer. Kuchen, lager, beer, so lager is German, leitmotif, lib, frommenlich, lied, you lied, it's a German word, you a lie, marzipan, meersham, meersham, mishmash, mishmash, <laughs> metwurst, muesli, noodle, when you eat noodles, you're eating a German food item, you're naming it a German word. Uh, noodles. Ohm. Ospolitik. Paraffin. Pfannkuchen. Plunder. To plunder. Like the capitalist plunder. The capitalist Yankee Anglo Protestant Americans who were attacking the Germans when they came to America. They were plundering. Poltergeist. Poltergeist was an awesome movie about. Uh, demons and ghosts and uh, being taken over by spirits. Pretzels, salted pretzels at ball games. Pretzel is a German word. Prosit, prosit, p r o s i t. Pumper nickel, rat skeller, riesling, rucksack, sour bratten, sour kraut, schnapps, schnitzel, seltzer. Schmearcase, Schmetzel, Springerly, Spritz, Stein, Stalin, Strusel, Strudel, Thuringer, Torte, Verboden, Waltz, Wonderlust, Wine Stube, Weiss Beer, Weltenschlag, Weltschmears, Weinerwurst, Wonderbar, Wonderbar is, I think, Wonderful. We live in America, it's Wonder Bar. We all live in America, America. It's Ramstein, because we live in a wonderful, it's, we live in America and it's Wonder Bar. We live in, in America, America, it's Wonder Bar. Wonder Kind, Worst, Yodel, Zeitgeist, Zigzag, and Zyback. Zigzag, Zigzag, Zigzag. It's a German word. So, Americans, if you want to say, ah, oh, don't know, I'm an American. Don't be a hyphenated American. Be, be an American. <laughs> Maybe you're going to be like one of those people, okay? And you take all German words out of your language. Quit speaking our words. Those are our words. You can't, you can't talk our words. You can't speak our words. Zigzag. You can't say. Quit saying zigzag and cookbook and pretzel. Those are our words. 
So German low words also come into the American vocabulary via the media where advertising slogans regularly make use of German words such as Farvenugen, Farvenugen, Farvenugen. <laughs> Here the use of a German word connotes quality and is a marker indicating that the product is made in Germany. Another popular advertising gimmick is to create a compound noun by adding fest like a suffix to any kind of possible sale. Thus a sale in November becomes November fest. And in fact, Oktoberfest, I want to say Cincinnati or Covington or Newport, somewhere in the greater Sanford Town area of northern Kentucky, there's an Oktoberfest. One expression that's perhaps the most universally understood and used word of German-American origin is OK, or OK. OK, so quit saying American uh, German words. Ger uh, you won't allow me to be a German-American. You want to be, oh, I'm American, so quit, talk quit saying the words. Don't say OK. You understand what I'm saying? OK, you get this? Don't say OK if you're going to be one of those nativists, one of those anglo Yankee nativist. One expression is that perhaps the most universally understood and used word of German American origin is okay. At the time of Henry Ford's Model T, the concept of mass production came into being. The automobiles put together on an assembly line. The last man on the line was responsible for the final inspection and he had to give his final approval. At first he did so by signing his name, but so many cars were passing him that he began to use a stamp with his initials on it. This individual with the Ford Motor Company was a German American named Oscar Krauss. Oscar Krauss, the head of his initials were OK. German is and has been historically influential in molding and shaping the language spoken in America. This is a result not only of uh, uh, not only of the substantial German immigration, but also of the fact that Germ German has been so widely spoken in the United States. Estimates of the percentage of the 60 million German Americans who can speak and understand German range today uh, from 10 to 30 percent. So 10 to 30 percent of German Americans today still retain their original mother tongue, which is impressive. I would like to learn German um, and and relearn my Spanish and Arabic and there, I think that's a good good list for now. German, Spanish, and Arabic. So estimates of the percentage of the 60 million German Americans who can speak and understand German is 10 to 30 percent. The percentage of those who can understand some German is most likely larger. Where is German spoken? Obviously, it's most widely spoken in states and regions where the German American element is predominant. The preservation of the German language has been especially strong among the church Germans. Germans also more strongly maintain in rural communities which tended to remain stable and constant for generations are usually close-knit. Finally, German tends to be spoken in two contexts, in the family and within the framework of ethnic institutions and organizations. So German is maintained within the family, so that's, uh, I would say, if you speak the German language, you have the close-knit family, as the historical German family were, uh, a close-knit family, and they even had a tradition where they would give their the farmhouse to their children when they got married, and then they would live in a house nearby. So they would give up their land and their house since they cared so much about their children. And the reason they got land was for the family to give their children an opportunity in order to be successful in this world. The history of the German as an ethnic language. Wait, who speaks German? Overwhelming majority uh, of those who speak German is American born. Most have never been to a German speaking country. Their ancestors came to America anywhere from one to eight generations ago. Also, most have no formal education in German, but have mainly been taught by members of their families. So the German language has been maintained in some German American circles. The history of German as an ethnic language reaches back to the beginnings of German immigration. is most likely is most likely been spoken since 1608, when the first permanent German settlers arrived in Jamestown, and it clearly, therefore, no foreign to America than is English. The first <laughs> German and English are equally and Spanish. German, English, and Spanish are equally foreign to America. Only Native American, if you could speak Shawnee or Cherokee or Creek or Chickasaw. And these are the only Kentuckians that can say that they are speaking the native tongue of America. If you're speaking German, Spanish, or English, you are not speaking the native tongue of America. And this, is, this book has been turned out to be uh, it's been real fun. I'm going to read another, another page after this. So, German American Experience by Don Heinrich Tolsman. Ha, <laughs>